Some people think that the first half of the year was really slow for video games, other people think it was really good, but whatever your opinion is, there is no doubt that there are some bangers to look forward to for the rest of the year, especially on the Switch. Now don't forget that this is our list. Honestly, it was really hard to compile the 10 games that we're most looking forward to, which is why we had to include an honourable mention section near the end. However, we'd love to hear what games you're most excited for. So drop them in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy today's video and make sure that you stick around till the end to find out what the most hyped games are for the rest of 2022. Let's kick this bad boy off with the fastest hedgehog alive, Sonic. When the initial trailer for Sonic Frontiers dropped last year, I was like, whoa man, this looks incredible. We could yap on about the Breath of the Wild comparisons and while they're all incredibly relevant points, we're sure you've heard them all before. However, people seem to forget that at its heart, Sonic is a platformer, an inherently different game style to anything remotely Breath of the Wild, and one I just happen to love. Actually, if I'm being honest, and I always try to be honest, Sonic was never really the platformer for me though. There's something about the speed involved that just goes against every clear, concise platforming bone in my body. And I kind of suck at them. But if there's a huge, beautiful, open world to speed around in, then it's a whole different kettle of fish. Even if you're a Sonic purist and don't like this new open idea, they recently showed off these cyberspace segments, which look far more similar to your traditional Sonic levels. There seems to be something for everyone in this game. I also wanted to quickly touch on the whole, the open world looks empty controversy. So hear me out. If you're going the speed of light, which Sonic is capable of, then you probably don't want stuff in your way. Case closed. Sega did a pretty average job at marketing Frontiers after that initial trailer drop though. They teamed up with IGN and dropped some random clips of random gameplay elements over like a month or something. It's fair to say they should have just given us that partner direct trailer months ago and none of us, including myself, would have lost the hype. But the hype's back now and hopefully it's here to stay. The world of Sonic Frontiers looks amazing and we can't wait to explore it at the end of the year. I know you knew there would be some in here. It's time to talk about an indie game. It wouldn't be a some kind of gaming list without one to be honest and sometimes Tom does call me the queen of indies. I do. Well I definitely wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't. <laughs> I do love a good indie. And this one has been on my wish list for years. Literally it was first announced in 2020. There were a lot of parts of that year that I think we all tried to block out, but Beer and Breakfast wasn't one of them. I fell in love with this game as soon as I saw it. Maybe it was the simulation aspects, maybe it was the adorable pun, but either way, my hype is real. You play as a bear who just wants to run a bed and breakfast in the forest. How wholesome is that premise? You get to decorate your own retreat and share it with tourists from all over so they can appreciate the forest too. I love decorating and designing my own spaces and games, and management games are actually the best. From the outset, management simulation games might not seem like everyone's cup of tea, but I promise you they are so much fun, especially when they're set in the forest and you're a giant teddy bear. This game's coming out on the 28th of July, so if you like cozy games, definitely put this one on your list. Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope is the sequel no one knew they needed, but they definitely did need. Actually, the original is one of the highest selling third party games on the Switch, so I guess it was only a matter of time before the inevitable sequel. If it was such a success, then why do I feel like it's underrated? I don't know, Kingdom Battle's good, you should play it. The Mario and Rabbids series are turn-based strategy games, something that we here at Some Kind of Gaming are huge fans of, but we do understand it's not for everyone, and that it's most definitely a huge spanner in the works for most Mario fans. Yes, we also would have loved to have seen a new mainline Mario platformer, but we'll definitely take this game. Sparks of Hope seems to be changing up the strategy formula a wee bit though. Most of these styles of games, including the OG Kingdom Battle, are played on a grid, with characters being able to move a certain number of squares in a turn. Here though, it looks like characters will have free roam in a contained area each turn, 
adding a bit more of an action feel to the turn-based combat. Mario and Rabbids also looks amazing. It's quickly shaping up to have some of the best visuals on the Nintendo Switch. And if the gameplay holds up to its predecessor, then we are in for one hell of a time when this comes out in late October. We have another resource management sim game to talk about, and I'm not mad about it. Two Point Campus is the successor of Two Point Hospital, which I have shared with you all on this channel before. Two Point Hospital is a stressful, yet cosy, yet hilarious game that is brimming with charm and a wild sense of humour. It's genuinely just a great time, and I'm sure that Two Point Campus will be no different. Except for the part that it's a campus. The gameplay is so strangely addictive that it's like you're under some kind of two-point spell. I played it to take some footage for one of our past videos. I was planning on taking like 20 minutes of footage and then I was playing it for like four hours. Those are the kind of games that I love so much where you can just get sucked into the vortex and all of a sudden hours have gone by in the space of a few minutes. From what I've seen of Two Point Campus so far, which is coming out on August 9th, it looks like the gameplay is very similar, but in a different setting. So I'm so excited to start a new journey creating a university and seeing what puns are in store for us this time. We're sure that this next one will be at the top of many people's lists, but with so many amazing games coming out this year, something had to drop down a bit. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is of course the game I speak of. At this point, the Xenoblade series almost feels like the one that's been given the most love on the Switch. Despite the first entry coming out on the Wii, pretty soon all three entries will be available on Nintendo's latest platform. And we ain't complaining. These games are sick. Mostly. Xenoblade 2 got a decent amount of hate because it was pretty slow to start and its battle system was also that. Slow. More on that in a bit though. But we don't think it's fair to judge something on its past mistakes. Especially because we never even played 2. Not because we bought into the hate, but because we just simply never got around to it. Too many games, too little time and all that. We did, however, play the first Xenoblade Chronicles, and that game is amazing. The different worlds of the Xenoblade games are just so exciting. They perfectly blend beauty and badassery, wars in flower fields and whatnot. They are also really good at telling their stories, and it looks like 3 is going to kick both of these things into high gear. From what we've seen so far, the story has already pulled me into this gorgeous world. Now the battle systems for Xenoblade games are pretty unique. They happen in real time and are kind of auto battlers with the player controlling special moves. Xenoblade 3 has definitely built on this though. Seven party members will be available at once, with the incredible option to combine them into Ouroboros, which personally I find just a little bit really really cool. There's also an in-depth class system, as well as the aforementioned specials called Arts. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 will likely be a big undertaking, with runtimes estimated to be anywhere up to 80 hours for the main story alone. But it is a must-have for any RPG fan. And we don't even have to wait that long, as it's coming out on the 29th of this month. Oh man, Splatoon has come a long way in a short period of time. It's a relatively new IP for Nintendo, but it has quickly risen to become part of its big four, along with Mario, Zelda, and Animal Crossing. So is it any real surprise that us, a couple of Nintendo fans, are excited for Splatoon 3? The world already has enough shooters in it, but Splatoon is a Nintendo game, and we all know that they like to do things a little differently. And a little differently is exactly what this genre needs. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of shooters, first person or not but I am a fan of them when you're shooting paint and you're trying to cover as much of the battlefield in it as possible. It is an idea only Nintendo would have dreamt up and we're so glad it worked out for them. Splatoon 3 is setting itself up to be Nintendo's premium online experience, while also seemingly focusing much more on the single player aspects than its predecessors. We love a solid campaign, so it sounds like this is going to be right up our alley. We've just got our fingers crossed for a split screen co-op option for online. We'd rather not have to buy two copies of the game. But we will if we have to though, as we plan on streaming this one over on our Twitch channel when it releases in September. So make sure you go follow us over at twitch.tv forward slash some kind of gaming if you'd like to see some girlfriend versus boyfriend action. 
or if you'd just like to see some gameplay or ask us some questions about it before you decide to buy. You'll probably remember this game, and if you don't, then you didn't watch last week's video. <laughs> but we couldn't help but talk about Potion Permit again. It is coming out in September this year after all, so it does fit the criteria, and it was the one game that stood out to us most from the Wholesome Direct. The art style was the thing that first grabbed our attention. It looks absolutely stunning, and there's just something about pixel art styles. Maybe it's just because I'm so old, but I just have so much nostalgia for them, and I don't know, I just love them. And Potion Permit does it so well, so 10 points to Potion Permit for the art style, and another 10 points for the premise. Any game where you make spells or mix up potions has my vote, honestly, and that is exactly what you do in Potion Permit. Cure the sick with your awesome potions. Potion Permit has a whole vibe of magical, cozy, wholesomeness that just speaks to me. I seriously cannot wait to get my paws on it because it looks like it's going to be my new favourite cozy game. We're almost to the top three now, so before we get to the cream of the crop, let's take a moment to appreciate all of the amazing things that for one reason or another didn't quite make it into the top ten. What's a crop? What's a crop? Well, why is it the cream Have you never the crop? played a farming sim before? Crops. Yeah, but cream Harvest. of the crop. Why is the, the cream? The cream is on top of the crop. Because cream's good, I guess. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> There's not really any real reason for us to doubt that Bayonetta 3 isn't coming this year. Its release date is still 2022, so call it a bad gut feeling. If we had a more solid release window, it would have easily made our list, but we're just not sure. Hey guys, it's Editing Tom here, and I literally have an egg on my face right now. So we recorded this video like hours before the Bayonetta release date trailer announcement happened. And yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but we're honestly not disappointed because we are super excited for Bayonetta. So consider this like 3.5 or something, I don't know. While it's not a new release, I'm still super excited for Nier Automata to come to the Switch. I haven't played it yet and it looks so badass, so I'm definitely hyped for this one. Persona 5 Royal looks amazing, and we are so glad that it's coming to the Switch. But it's also not a new release. The base game is from like 2016, and we felt like new titles deserve the spotlight in this video. It feels like there is a giant hole in this list for me. Hogwarts Legacy is the game that I'm personally looking forward to most in 2022, and it is coming out on the Switch, but honestly, I'm going to get it on the PS5. The franchise means so much to me, and the game looks so incredible that I just don't want to feel like I missed out on anything if I got the Switch version. All I can think of is the Witcher 3 scenario, and I just really don't want to be disappointed. The top three! I actually said in a video a couple of weeks back that Live Alive was my most anticipated game of the year. And the fact that it's only number three is just a testament to the quality of games that are releasing in the next six months. Live Alive instantly grabbed our attention because it's being done in the absolutely gorgeous HD 2D art style, popularised by Octopath Traveler. To say that we're fans of this art style is undercutting it just a bit. We freaking love it. The game is actually a remake of a 1994 SNES title, but the reason it probably doesn't sound familiar to you is because it never actually released outside of Japan. This undoubtedly had a role in Live Alive getting the HD 2D remake treatment, so while it's a shame that we never got the original, it's ultimately worth it for this beast. Live Alive is an RPG with a twist or two. There are eight main characters with entirely separate story arcs in this game, meaning that it almost plays like eight different games, until the very end that is where they apparently all intertwine somehow. Each protagonist's story has its own unique gameplay elements, We've tried three of these so far thanks to the free demo that's available right now, and we can confirm this. The Edo period Japan has elements of stealth. The distant future plays like a space horror with a lot of dialogue and exploration, and this was probably our least favourite of them so far. And Imperial China is the most akin to a traditional JRPG. As far as we can tell, this remake has actually added a scenario. Obviously we haven't played the original, but nothing online mentions eight of them. The medieval era that's present here is seemingly something new. Apparently, this game is so much more than just a remake. 
As far as battles go, it's almost halfway between the classic turn-based JRPG action and the strategy style of something like Fire Emblem, but far less in depth. I can easily bang on about this game for a whole video, but for now, you can go try out the free demo on the eShop for yourself. Actually, let us know in the comments below if you would like to see a whole video review of this game. It's coming out in under a week, and can you tell that I can't wait? Harvestella was announced at the latest Nintendo Partner Showcase, and I nearly peed my pants when I saw it. It looks like a more grown-up version of Rune Factory, but super badass, more anime, and more realistic graphics. Harvestella takes the farming sim genre to a whole new level, combining it with combat and another super unique twist. Your main goal seems to be to stop the quietest season. When this season hits, all of your crops die, it gets all dark, monsters come out. If you thought the winter was bad, this looks 10,000 times worse. But I did gather from the trailer that you'd be able to unravel the mysteries of the season of death and stop it from happening somehow. I just really like the fact that they've taken a usually happy-go-lucky, peaceful game like a farming or life sim and made it far darker and more grown up. The combat looks really great too. I love the combination of combat and farming sims. The tone looks interesting, the graphics look awesome, and it's by Square Enix, so we really have super high expectations for this one. But we will have to wait for November 4th to find out, I guess. I'm sure you've all guessed it by now since we haven't already talked about it yet, but the Switch release that we are most looking forward to in the second half of 2022 is... Drum roll, please. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Duh. It honestly might not only be our most anticipated Switch game of this year, but our most anticipated Pokemon game of all time. It's the first ever open world Pokemon game, and that is huge for the franchise. Fans have been asking for this for so long, and the Pokemon company has actually listened for once. Pokemon Legends Arceus seemed almost like they were testing the waters, seeing if people liked it before they went balls deep and actually did the thing. Arceus was a great game, but it wasn't exactly the Breath of the Wild's Pokemon crossover that everyone was hoping for. It wasn't even open world. It was so close though, it was like dangling the carrot in front of our faces. Or maybe something a little bit more enticing than a carrot. Mm -hmm. It was like dangling the donut in front of our faces, showing us what an open world Pokemon game could be, but Arceus wasn't quite it. And now it's finally here, the Pokemon game that we've all been waiting for. As usual, it's releasing in November of this year, and we cannot be more excited for it. And that's all of them. But what did you guys reckon of our list? We're pretty happy with the choices we made, but maybe you think we're excited for like the worst games to be coming out this year. I don't know. Honestly, these lists are pretty hard to curate as there are so many amazing titles constantly coming to all systems. We actually changed the order of this video like a billion times and only decided on it like two minutes before we started filming. It's ridiculous. Well, if you weren't already excited about all of the amazing games coming out this year, hopefully you are now. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see all of the updates and reviews that we're going to make for these games. And until next time, bye.